Paddy's gearing up for the GAA All-Ireland Football and Hurling. For all live TV championship games, it's money back as a free bet if your losing first goal scorer scores a goal anytime. Max £20. Excludes shops. T's and C's apply. 18 plus. BeGambleAware.org Hello and a very warm welcome to the GEA Postcast. I'm David Jennings from the Racing Post and with Dublin in action this weekend we thought it was only fair to get a Dublin legend on the team sheet to preview their Leinster semi-final showdown with Westmead. We aimed high, we wanted a workhorse of a midfielder, a two-time All-Star, the man who dominated many an aerial duel at Crow Park, a powerhouse that the hill adored. Unfortunately Brian Fenton was not released by Jim Gavin so we've had to make do with Kieran Whelan instead. We also have Damien Fitzgerald from our sponsors, Paddy Power, and what is a jam-packed weekend of football. Um, so we've a lot to get through, lads. As ever, we're going to start with our five quick-fire questions. And uh, after that magnificent intro, Kieran, we're going to start with you. Uh, so the first of your five questions is, you have a 45 to win the All-Ireland with the last kick of the game. Who do you pick to take it? Dean Rock, Brian Sheehan, or Killian O'Connor? Now, I, I reckon... You probably know the answer to this one. I, I definitely don't let your don't let your heart rule your head. Well, now. listen, I'd always go with somebody that has you know a ninety percent plus return rate, and so I think in that regard you'd have to stick with Dean Rock as much as he hit the post now against Kerry in the National League final when it was a last minute kick. But I'd still I'd, I'd bank him all day. <laughs> okay, so number two, uh, the most rousing pre-match team talk you've ever heard. Who gave it, and what match was it before? Uh, it's it's funny, you know, because the the current managers nowadays, you know, are all very cool, calm. It's all stats, leaving up the players, having a chat, you know, that sort of. And, and that kind of came in the latter part of my career. But the one person that stuck out for me that I, he, he was a fantastic motivator was was back Tommy Carr uh, when he had the Dubs back in 1999 for four years. And there was one particular game I think down in Turles when we drew with Kerry. Um, in, in the first day in an All Ireland quarter final, and at half time we were we we, we were brutal in the first half. We I think Kerry had a seven eight point lead at half time, and and uh, Tommy left fly anyway at half time. But when he spoke, he spoke deep from the heart. He was a passionate man, and I'll always remember he nearly it was, it was kind of hair dryer treatment. But whatever he done, he woke us and kicked us into action, and we went out and we probably should have won the game. We got a draw, but that's one that sticks out for me. Uh, that day in Turles, all right, yeah. Yeah, I wonder do many managers actually, as you say, they're very cool and, and calm and I can't no, imagine I don't, Jim... I think the day of hitting the table and losing the rag and, you know, throwing bottles around, I, I think that's gone. It's, it's very analytical halftime talks now about where, where the team is performing, where they're not performing. You know, I think the players contribute a lot more now. I think it, 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 that's just the way it is. I, I, I think... You know, the day of the, the manager coming in roaring and shouting at inter-county level is gone. I'm sure you still get it now with junior club football or intermediate <laughs> yeah, our, football. Our, our, <laughs> I, play, I play with Dunderry and Mead, and our manager is, is Kevin Dowd, who was Tommy's brother. And uh, he'd be very well known in, in, uh, in Mead now. He wouldn't have uh, the best temperament in the world. But I have to say, his team talks are old school, and they're pretty <laughs> effective. We got to the intermediate final last week, but he, he's from the, the old school of old team school talks, talk, let's just say. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. OK, so number three, what current player do you think will make a great pundit on the Sunday game after he's retired? So who's the next Kieran Whelan? Uh, um, if I was to pick one, a guy that I'd like to listen to who's very honest and I think he gives a very good insight and I think he will be excellent, would be Sean Kavanagh. Um, I think Sean's obviously coming near the end this year. Uh, but any time I've listened to him, he's been very insightful and very honest uh, about the game. And, and, and I think... When he retires, there's, there's probably a lot to be learned from him. He's been, you know, he's been one of the best players of a generation. Absolute fantastic player. Uh, three All Irelands under his belt. Uh, so certainly, um, he's he's one I would keep an eye out for, and I think I think he'll get involved next year. Good answer. Yeah, he could be sitting beside you next year. He could be, um, or I could be gone. <laughs> the other, you know. <laughs> uh, never, never. Um, so question number four: Discounting Dublin, Kerry, Mayo, and Tyrone. Um, Mayo did well to make it into this list, actually. So, discounting <laughs> Dublin, Kerry, Mayo, and Tyrone, who will be the next county to win the All Ireland? Oh, that's that's a really that's good a question. question. That's a uh, very good question. Listen, I, I like Monaghan. I really did like Monaghan. I think they have a brilliant manager, Malik O'Rourke. Um, very well organised, well drilled. They have a bit of youth coming into their team. Uh, you know, they've they've won a, a an Ulster minor and twenty one title and. They blooded a few young lads. I think they're still a coming team. I think there's a couple of years in them. They mightn't just have be ready yet, 
But the other team you got to look at, you know, is Kildare, I suppose. You know, they obviously gave me a bit of a trouncing day of there last week, as I'm sure Thanks you, for that, were, Karen, you, yeah. you witnessed, yeah. Um, but listen, all joking aside, um, what I like about Kildare is I've seen, being involved with development squads here in Dublin and minors, and Kildare have been very, very competitive great structures in place um, at, at juvenile level and I think they're beginning to see the rewards come through um, their performance last week was very polished um, as I said last week I think they still have a they still have a mountain to climb they haven't done it in Crow Park yet they have a mental block in Crow Park but I think they're a coming county in terms of what they're doing uh, behind the scenes so if you were to ask me who could break into that top four because they're maybe not this year but maybe in the next two or three years yeah Okay, so it's Kildare. So number five, your final one of your quickfire questions, and probably the most interesting one. Who was the laziest player you ever trained with? The laziest player I ever trained with was my midfield This is a competitive race, I'd say. Uh, yeah, it was, it was between him and me, I'd say. But um, uh, <laughs> the laziest player I ever trained with was my midfield partner, Shane Ryan. Um, Shane was, had this unique talent of just being able to switch it on in Crow Park on a consistent basis and, and I, I got to know him quite well in the build up to you know A versus B matches or training he was so focused on the match itself that he actually didn't give a shit about the, any, any of the training the build up to matches and stuff like that and um, he, he was unique in that regard I always came back you know after Christmas carrying a bit of weight having a joke and a laugh about it but then he had this amazing tech knack of being able to get himself in prime condition for, for, for the summer and, and deliver when it mattered most. He just had a great engine. He had a natural ability and fitness to, to be able to play the game and he, he didn't have to worry about doing too much work off the pitch. So yeah, my old, my old midfield partner, Shane Wright. So that's your qu- quick fire questions over and done with. And five for you, Damien, uh, betting related uh, five quick fire questions for you, Damien Fitzgerald from Paddy Power. Yep. What is the biggest GAA bet Paddy Power has taken in 2017 and who was it on? Um, I think our biggest bet was we took two bets of around 20k twice on the tip hurlers. We took one against Wexford in the league semi-final, which is obviously a winner, and then another one on against Cork and Munster. So we got to keep that one. Was it from the same? The no, same no, or? different customers. Number two, what is the strangest bet you've seen struck so far in 2017? Um, just looking with Dear McConnelly to be sent off and black carded in every championship game at 25s, which is a very unlucky loser, really, if you're thinking about it. And um, we took a few bets on Cork hurlers or footballers not to play in the game in the new park. Um, they might get there yet if they lose the monster final, but it, it looks like they won't play there. So What's, what's so. that one again? Not car curlers or footballers not to play a championship game in the new Parky Kiev this year. What price um, was that? It was two to one. Right, okay. We expected them to be ready a bit sooner. Right, okay. Interesting. Okay, number three. What's your own most memorable GA bet? Um, I suppose I backed Donegal to win the All Ireland at twenty fives in two thousand and twelve. I got him I remember watching him play in a league match against Dublin in March, and I just remember looking at them and 25s for the All Ireland, so I'd bet at that, and yeah, that came up. So you're not going to back a 25 to 1 win or the All Ireland every year, so that's a that's a good one. Yeah, Jesus, that, that is a nice one. All right, number four. Now, these two last questions are very interesting, I think. In 2022, so we're talking five years' time, would you rather back Dublin at 3 to 1, Galway at 10 to 1, or Cork at 50 to 1? This is the football uh, championship. Yeah, um, they're all. It's an interesting question, as you said, and you can make an argument for any of them, but I think looking there, Cork at 50 to 1, I think there's always going to be talent in Cork, and if they get it together in any given year, they shouldn't be 50 to 1 for her in All Ireland, so. Yeah, I'd big price. I'll go for my big price if I'm going to be waiting five years for it. So, Cork. That should be 500 to 1. What would your answer be there, Kieran? Five years' time, Dublin at 3 to 1, Galway at 10 to 1, or Cork at 50 to 1? It's a good one. Uh, it's a good one. I, 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 I think I think I'd probably agree that I think you wouldn't get Cork at 50 to 1, but I do think they have a long, long way to travel. Um, Dublin 3 to 1, I think I keep my money in my pocket. Being honest with you, because they'll they'll have, they'll have done the five in a row at that stage, David. So they probably you know let somebody else in to pick one up. And sure, Leinster would be so strong in 2022 with me. Oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, and your and your final one, number five, uh, Damien. Who would you back to win the All Ireland hurling championship in 2022? Tipperary at six to one, Limerick at ten to one, or Kilkenny at fourteen to one. Uh, 
again, just interesting, and you can make arguments on him, but looking at the under-21 game last night, I suppose he'd be taking Limerick at 10-1. to 1. Like, they're going to have a lot of players at, like, the right age in 2022. The two Lynches, Barry Nash, Tom Morris, he, Peter Casey, Kyle Hayes, like, you could go on. Like, they'll all be 26, 27 at that, age, at that stage, and... 10 to 1 sounds big to me, and now it is Limerick, and they are well capable of making a mess of a team like that. But 10 to 1 Limerick. Okay, so Limerick and Cork are the two All Ireland winners in 2022. You heard it here first. Okay, so we'll uh, quickly reflect upon last weekend's action, and Kieran, we'll come to you first. Very impressive performance by Tyrone. Are Tyrone now Dublin's biggest threat to win All Ireland? Well, in a strange sort of way, I've, I've always. Tyrone are always a threat to Dublin, um, and, and they've always made it difficult for Dublin, and they and they relish playing Dublin. And Mickey Hart loves the, even when he's come down in league games, he's, he's always made it difficult for Dublin, and I think he would have loved to have got a crack at them last year. Um, listen, they've been a team that's been developing and coming. They're very very organised. Are they as good as they showed last week? Um, I'm not sure. I, w- I wouldn't I wouldn't get totally overhyped by them just yet. Uh, I thought Donegal were were very, very poor, um, particularly in the second quarter. They stood off Tyrone. Tyrone kicked eight points with very little, with, with ease, to a, not very little pressure on them. Um, so you gotta, you got to look at it, how far had Donegal drifted. Uh, they were quite unorganised defensively. So, yes, Tyrone will take huge momentum uh, and they'll take huge confidence. And they will leave that game last week believing that they can win all Ireland. That's what Mickey Hart will instill in them. They will, he'll, he'll, believe, they, he'll instill that belief that they can get to Crow Park and they can beat the Dubs. And you've got to look at Dublin and say, well, where are Dublin now? We don't really know. And we won't really know for the next five or six weeks whether they have kind of dipped in form a bit. But what's likely to happen is Dublin are going to meet Tyrone in all Ireland semi final if they both continue to win. Uh, and I, I think Tyrone would would prefer that rather than all Ireland final. I think uh, it might be a, a better time to maybe get Dublin uh, with a little bit less hype around it. Um, and if you ask me the original question, are they the biggest threat? I think Tyrone and Kerry are the two that Dublin would probably fear most at this present time. Yeah. Were you on duty last Sunday for the Sunday game? I was. Did you Did you have any part to play in the Man of the Match award for Matty Donnelly? Uh, I did. Well, tell me this. I, I just want to know how should I be more gutted than I already am. As listeners will know, I am a huge, I, I'm a founding member of the Niall Sludden uh, fan club, and I backed him at sixteen to one for man of the match. And after the match, I thought he was roughly an even money shot, four points from play. Was he close to getting? He that was. One? He was in the top three. Um, oh. He was. He, he was in the top three. There was uh, there was himself. Uh, Matty Donnelly and then and the name alludes me the, the guy the, the cornerback the cornerback yeah. uh, yeah. he the guy that marked Michael Murphy uh, mm. kicked two points he was my choice uh, but uh, Matty Donnelly won out on a majority vote so yeah he was there he was there thereabouts but you missed the boat unfortunately oh, God. they don't give each way in Paddy Power now no, Top they don't. Three, no, no, no. But anyway, I, I, I'll continue to back uh, Sloden from one of the match and all the remaining Tyrone fixtures. Uh, uh, Damien, what price are Tyrone now for the All Ireland? I presume they're a good bit shorter. Uh, yeah, they've come in from nines to six sixes for the All Ireland. Um, yeah, they, they were very impressive last week. You have to say, uh, they're one to two for Ulster now. Yeah, I, I think. I think the strange thing is they haven't really played Dublin in the championship in the last few years, so it's hard to see how that game would go, but I'd imagine they'll give Dublin a big test. Big, t- um, they have, They're have very strong on in the middle, and they defend well, obviously. Um, yeah, can see could def- definitely see them beating Dublin. Kerry are going to be there. Like I'd be surprised if, if it comes outside those three. Kieran, we spoke about Kildare a little bit earlier on, and, and just very quickly, um, last Saturday night, I certainly didn't see it coming. Um, I would class myself as a reasonably pessimistic meat supporter, and I thought we had a big chance given the forward line, but uh, this was men against boys, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, and um, I know I know, we, I would generally slag it about me, but I, I was surprised when me myself, because I saw them against Loud and Parnell Park, and I, I was using. I, I know defensively, yes, they were shaky, and the full back of the black card. Uh, but the forward line looked really, really good. You know, full of pace. You know, and 
looked like a forward line that were going to trouble trouble Kildare in my opinion. You know, the likes of Killian O'Sullivan, McMahon, Donald Lenhan, Riley, all these guys. You were saying to yourself, you know, they'll they'll they they be they be very good on the front foot. You'd be worried about them on the on the back foot, but the forward line didn't. Uh, Really didn't perform. I think five of them were substituted last last weekend. Mm. Um, they now the Kildare didn't let them uh, play to a certain degree, but there was there was a flatness about me last week. And one of the things, David, I have to say that that I I know was when I was in Parnell Park, and I, and I just they got going a small bit in the second half. But the me team, the warm up they do is absolutely off the charts. You know, they were in Parnell Park and they were nearly... You're not the first person to say this now. This is interesting. Yeah, they were running for 40, 45 minutes before the game because I was there a good hour in advance and I was sitting there thinking to myself, Jesus, these guys would be... There's nothing left, you know. Uh, Yourself and Shane Ryan wouldn't like that? No, definitely not. Definitely not. But I just wonder last Saturday in the heat, you know, a very warm day. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming they'd done a similar level of warm-up because in that first half, they just looked flat. There was mm. flatness. There was no work ethic in the forward line. Kildare snuffed them out. And we have to give credit to Kildare. You know, you really do. I thought their performance, it was the best performance I've seen from Kildare in, in a number of years. Very well organised, structured defensively. Some great forwards. You know, the, Daniel Flynn was absolutely fantastic. Carl McNally was good. But I think they also exposed a huge weakness in the mid, mid full back line. Um, they, were, they were five yards off them. And uh, they, they were very naive in their defending. So... It's, it's a strange one. I thought we'd get more from me this year, but it looks like they've a lot of work to do. But Ankle there on the up. Well, you heard it here first, lads. Kieran Whelan said if Mead only warmed up for 15 minutes instead of 45 <laughs> minutes, they would have beaten Kildare. So there we go. We have the, the secret now what went wrong in the, in the Mead camp. And very, very quickly, lads, because we better get to the, to, the, to the main action this weekend. Anybody catch your eye in the qualifiers, Kieran? Uh, well, this weekend, I suppose, Armagh, Fermanagh will be, will be a decent enough game, I think. Um, Cavan Offaly, uh, we'll, 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 I think I think Cavan will have enough in that one. Being honest with you, I think they're travelling away from home. But you know, Cap, there's a bit more about Cavan than there is about Offaly. I watched the Offaly game against Westmead last last week. You know, when I'm McNamee's back when he doesn't perform, you know, they they didn't really have a whole lot of firepower up front. I think Cavan are much better well, balanced. And I think they'll win that one. Uh, Armagh, Fermanagh. Then you got to I think Fermanagh are, are in decline. Uh, I think it's a must-win game for Armagh. They go up there on Sunday evening, and I think you've got to fancy them to, to, to pull through. But a couple of interesting qualifier games. But it's really the next couple of weeks is when it really kicks into action, you know, um, when a few of the top teams start coming up against each other. Well, there you go, folks. Now you see Kieran Whelan is always thinking one step ahead because we were thinking of last weekend's qualifiers, and he's thinking about this weekend's qualifiers. Oh, sorry, you meant last weekend. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. There's no point thinking about the past. We have to look forward into the ah, future. Yeah, and very quickly, lads. In a word, obviously Roscommon um, were reasonably impressive against Limerick uh, last week. In a word, Galway Roscommon. Who wins it, Kieran? Oh, Galway. Galway. I think. Yeah. In a, in a word, Galway. Roscommon have been have been under the radar. I think suited them this year. Kevin McStay writing them off. And uh, no fanfare about them. Uh, it won't be as easy. Galway don't hold the favourites tag very well. And that's one that's one question mark you have to hang over, hangs over them. When they're favourites, they tend to underperform. Uh, so they're going to have to get themselves right. But if they do get themselves right, they, they have you know, far too much quality for what's coming. Damien, betting on the Connacht final, Galway is common. Who wins it? Yeah, we're 2-5 to five, Galway, 15-2 to to draw, 5-2 to two, Roscommon. At those four houses, I'd give Roscommon a chance. As Kieran said, Galway aren't the best favourites sometimes, and I think five to two more might be worth a chance on Roscom. Okay, dokes. Now um, we uh, we very quickly come on to uh, Dublin Westmead in a few moments, but the competition winner from last week was Jim Burke from Navan in County Mead, who I actually know personally, but I didn't pick this. Six. And he wins twenty five euro worth of free bets credit to his account as he correctly answered that T J Reid got the first goal in Kilkenny for Wexford against Wexford. So well done to you, Jim. I'm sure you'll spend it very wisely, possibly on one of my tips. Uh, this week's question is. Who is currently the top scorer in the football championship? So who has scored the most in the football championship so far? Don't say the answer, lads, but do you actually know the answer, Kieran? No. <laughs> Damien? Um, yes. Okay, that's okay. That's good. I believe you. Thousands wouldn't. Uh, tweet your answer with the hashtag postcast and the winner will be announced in next week's show. So who is the top scorer in the football championship so far? Tweet your answer with the hashtag postcast and the winner will be announced in next week's show. And uh, we're just going to take a quick break and join us in part two for this week's action.
Paddy's gearing up for the All Ireland Football and Hurling. For all live TV championship games, it's money back as a free bet if your losing first goal scorer scores a goal anytime. Max twenty pounds excludes shops. T's and C's apply. Eighteen plus. BeGambleAware.org. Welcome back to the GEA Postcast. I'm delighted to be joined by Dublin legend Kieran Whelan and Damien Fitzgerald from our sponsors Paddy Power. Now on to the big one, lads. Dublin v Westmead, Crow Park, Leinster semi final on Sunday. Kieran. What way, first of all, do you think Westmead will set up? Will set up? I know you had a, a slight little argument with uh, Pat Spillane on the couch last weekend, and I'd be on your side. I can't see them um, being overly positive. No, I, listen, I, it's trendy now to say that a team is going to play with ambition and positive, and it's great for the game, isn't it? But like, let, let, you have to be a realist as well. You know, you have to, to cut your cloth to who, who you're coming up against. And if Westmead go man-to-man against... Um, Dublin, they get it. Simple as that. Like, not very few teams will, will chance going man to man. Like, Kerry are the only ones that have been brave enough to press them at particular points in the game, you know. Uh, but I think Tom Cribben will, and, and, and I think he's, he's, he's even come out and said that, I, I, you know, he's not going to be naive and play the football that everybody wants him to play. He, they have to be in the game. They have to give themselves a chance to hang in there. And for that's what happens. It's, it's a curtailment process for Westmead. Last year, they look at last year and they say, right, we're a point down at half time. Um, we came out the start of the second half and we conceded two goals in a minute, which if, if essentially that was game over. But And the previous year, they also collapsed in the third quarter. So I don't see anything hugely different from Westmead. I think Westmead will be kind of hoping that maybe Dublin, you know, without Dermot Connolly, aren't as maybe threatening as they have been in, in, in recent years. I think they'll play with Kieran Martin and John Hessen up front. They'll... Paul Cherry will drop and try and be the playmaker. They'll try and break, try and turn over Dublin and break hard from defence and maybe run at Dublin and go at them and ask them a few questions. But it will definitely be a curtailment process. A little bit more. They might play with you know a little bit more ambition with an extra forward or something, but they'll definitely try and curtail Dublin. I think it will follow a similar path to last year. But the big question mark is where are Dublin at? You know, and I think that's that's we'll see whether Dublin are playing with the same fluency as that 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 that, that they were. Like you got to look back at last year and. Ask yourself, Dublin won the All Ireland probably playing f- f- poor enough, you know, poor enough, and Mayo were in an All Ireland final who hadn't they hadn't beaten a Division One team on their way to that All Ireland final. We got to remember that they're probably their biggest significant win was against Tyrone. So um, we got to you know got to maybe ask a few cold questions of, of of last year. They fell over the line. It'd be interesting to see where they're at this year. And uh, I'm presuming you've some inside line into the Dublin camp. Like, who who's likely to start? Is it going to be any like surprise starter, especially up front? Well, I, listen, I, I think from from a Dublin perspective, you know, Michael Darmac has been carrying a few injuries. I think you know midfield is crucial that they do get a partner for Brian Fenton and somebody nailed that to the mast this year. You know, Kieran Redden played there a bit during the league. Uh, Shoot, has gone in from Cool, apparently going very well in training. Um, there's another young kid in there from my own club, Brian Howard, who was very good in the 21s. So they they might spring a couple of surprises, I think, around the mid sector in the in the forward line. You know, I think we're going to need a couple of new leaders to emerge as well. You know, Conor Callan, a lot of talked about, hasn't really happened from so far, but that can be. You know, when you're playing intercounty football, it can it can just take one game to spark one one game for that bit of confidence to flow into a guy and they all of a sudden they become comfortable in that role and you'd be like like to think that w- that would happen for O'Callaghan this year um, you know Niall Scully is another one who played a lot during the league he'll probably he could get a chance in the half forward line in, in, in Connolly's absence so you're just hoping that a couple a couple of forwards emerge a partner for Brian Fenton in midfield um, and I think at the back they'll still be they'll still be solid enough once they keep everybody fit like Jack McCaffrey back is, is massively important like if you look back Dublin scored nine goals, I think, in the championship last year. The previous year, they scored 18. But McCaffrey was hugely influential in a lot of them because he's he's the player that puts the fear of God into opposition, opposition defence. When he goes at a defence, it can open up and, and create opportunities for Dublin. So I think him staying fit, McCarthy staying fit, are hugely important for Dublin this year as well. And Kieran, one player I just want to get your opinion on because somebody compared him to Aidan McGeady in soccer terms last week, and I actually agreed with him. Paul Mannion. Has seems to have all the attributes to be something really special, but there's just no end product, is there? Well, well, I, I think if you remember last year against Donegal, he came in and he, you know, he he he, he kind of turned the game. For me, Paul Mannion just hasn't got a consistent enough run in the team. He's kind of been, he's played in fits and starts, and he's started a game, and then he's been on the bench and. 
you know, he hasn't got a consistent run, and I think that's that's what he needs. And obviously, maybe he's not performing in training, or there's something, you know, that he's not performing at a consistent level to get in the team. But I think it's a huge year for him. You know, it's a huge year. Would you start him? Yes, absolutely. I'd start him, and I'd start him right for the Leinster final, and I try and you know build his confidence because I think he is a, I think he's a very very good inside forward, a very smart player, intelligent player, great left foot on him. He's a scorer. Uh, he's a guy that knows where the post is, and uh, I think he just needs a consistent run. And you kind of forget that he's still only, you know, he's still only 22, 23. And he missed only, a year as well. He yeah. missed a year as well. He's still only a young lad, so there's there's loads left in him. So yeah, I would I I'd give him a good run out in the team, and and he, I just think he needs to be playing consistently. Mm, he's definitely one of my guilty pleasures in that Dublin team, Damien. Uh, few prices on this match. Uh, first of all, the the win market. I presume Dublin are pretty short, and the, the handicaps as well. Yeah, one to hundred Dublin for the match. Thirty threes to draw, and eighteen to one Westmead. The handicap market, which I suppose is the main interest, is a thirteen point handicap. Dublin minus thirteen or evens. Handicap draw eleven to one, and ten to eleven Westmead plus thirteen. Which side of the handicap would you be on there, Damien? I think I'd probably be on the plus 13, not strongly, but I think what's important for Westmead is they have played Dublin the last couple of years, which the more you play Dublin, I think the better it is in terms of experience. Um, Dublin as well haven't been scoring goals. We said this the Carlo match as well. I, if you don't score goals, beating a 13 point handicap is very hard. And Dublin haven't scored goals all through the league and against Carlo, so... Yeah, plus and I, uh, it's obviously a different level, but Westmead have kept two clean sheets already in the championship, so that's obviously a, a bonus as well. Yeah, I I just think Dublin haven't really shown that this year that would make me back them minus thirteen. Um, I think Dublin probably need to put in a bit of a performance just because um, going in against Kildare will be a step up on what they've done. So. Bit of a performance needed here from Dublin. Just if you have them back from the All Ireland, I'd say you'd want them to step it up a bit. Kieran, will Dublin win by 14 points or more, or would you oh, be on the, the Westmead side of that handicap? It's a tricky one. Those bookmakers always have a about spot on, and, and it's, it's, it does be very funny when you're watching a match and you can see people that are obviously on the spread. You know what I mean? Still excited when there's a 13, 14 <laughs> point difference. You know, um, I would agree there with Damien. The, the, the lack of Firepower Dublin recently throughout the National League and you know not scoring goals would 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 be would concern me uh, and as I said Westmead will go for cur- curtailment I think it was 15 points last year and 13 points the previous year um, I think Westmead are slightly better they learn from the experience and we don't really know where Dublin are at so I think that the, the sense of money would probably go on Westmead plus 13. Yeah, the two bets that interest me here I, I think. Westmead plus 13 is, is a little bit of value. I think it's maybe three points too much uh, in the handicap. And Westmead to score over 11.5 points. So Westmead to score 12 points or more, I think Damien is five to six. Uh, that's something that would interest me. I, I think they can get to 12 points um, at the very least. I know they haven't reached that tally in their last two Leinster finals, but I just think this is a more developed Westmead team than in the last couple of years. Now, yeah. lads, before we move on to Monaghan and Down, I just want to shout for... for a man of the match poke and a first goal scorer poke. So, Damien, we'll start with you. Um, Kevin McManaman, first goal scorer at 15 to 2, and Kieran Kilkenny, man of the match at 8 to 1. Kieran? Uh, I, I, I'd actually. Uh, now, before I, we actually start this, are you on the. The, 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 the selection process on no, Sunday night? No, I'm not this weekend. That's all right, because no, I remember doing this with Kevin McStay a couple of years <laughs> yeah, ago, no, and not. he was actually picking the man of the match, and are you yeah. giving a tip for man yeah. of the match? <laughs> no, I'm not on this weekend, so there's no, no compromise, I'm okay. Um, I, think, uh, I think there's going to come a time when Conor Callan is going to explode onto the scene, um, and generally, you know, when a young player does like that score three or four points in, 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 in their first championship match, they'll generally be close enough to pick up man of the match. So he's one that I'm going to stick with because I have faith in him uh, for man of the match. And if I was going for first goal scorer, um, first goal scorer, an interesting one. Connie's obviously gone. He won't be on the penalties. Um, so it, it, it's a tough one from a Dublin perspective. Maybe if Bernard starts, he's still always dangerous around goal. And, and, and I think Bernard is setting out a stall to, to prove something this year. He could rattle the net. He's always dangerous in around that square. So Conor Callaghan for um, man of the well, match. What is Conor Callaghan for man of the match? Actually, is yeah. seven to one. Seven to one. Uh. Seven. 
Seven to one, yeah. Jeez, that's miserable, Damien. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought that'd be at least twelves. Um, so there you go. Uh, Conor Callum for man of the match, uh, seven to one. And first goal score, Bernard Brogan. Five, Five to one. one. Five to one. Okay, dokes. Um, I'm going to stick with my guilty pleasure, Paul Mannion. He's going to come good one of these days, and I, I'll actually go for both Mannion to get the first goal and uh, man of the match. Uh, but he owes me a few quid at this stage, it's safe to say. So moving on uh, to the Ulster semi-final on, on Saturday night between Monaghan and Down. Kieran, we spoke a little bit about Monaghan earlier on. Are they now realistic All Ireland contenders? Are, are we now talking about Monaghan in the same sentence as the Tyrones, the the, the Mayos? Like they they have evolved. Yeah, I, I, I really like them. I've seen a good bit of them. Uh, they're very, very organised. They're very well drilled. Um, they're all very comfortable in the system of play that they're playing. They can grind They can grind with you. Uh, they'll grind teams down. They won't hammer teams. You know, they have a system in place that makes them very, very difficult to beat. But if teams push up on them, uh, they'll hurt you badly because they've got a good inside forwards. And they've done that against Cavan. Like, Cavan were a little bit you know, playing with the wind in the first half in the in, in the Ulster uh, quarter final, and they kind of pushed up. They, 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 they were trying to push up and cause them a bit of problems. And, and Monaghan, within a couple of minutes, absolutely pounced on them and kicked two or three points into the wind. So I like Monaghan, as I said. I think they have a great balance. Great full, like Drew Wiley, solid, hardy full back. Uh, his brother as well, uh, Ryan Wiley in the corner. You know, they're solid. They have a few big men around midfield. Their middle eight work very, very well, getting back to support each other and getting up the field. And then they've got McManus. They've got McCarran who's coming. They've got young McCarthy to come in when, when the game opens up. So there's a lot of positives for Monaghan. As I said, the big negative is they don't tend to put, put away teams. But they hammered down last year, I think it was 222 to nine points. You know, it was a appalling down performance. Um, so I would have a strong fancy that Monaghan will, will, will win this. I don't know what the spread is, but I, I think they'll win it by six or seven. Like you've got yeah, five down. is a handicap, Kieran. What is it? Five. Five, yeah, I think they'll I think they'll edge that out in my opinion. Mm. Like, I look it down and you kinda of say, Well, yes, they'll take great confidence from the victory against Armagh. Um they went on a horrible run for two years and that will give them a little bit of belief, uh, winning a big game, uh, championship game in Ulster. But when I look at them I don't see the quality in their forward line to threaten Monaghan. Uh, Quaylon Mooney is, is and Daryl Hanlon are, are, are probably their key threats coming ha- from the half back line. They, you know, they created when, when they went kind of uh, played attacking football against Armagh, they conceded four or five goal chances in the first half. They reverted to tight then in the second half. They kicked six points. They conceded three. It was a, they grinded it out in the end. I, there's nothing in them that sticks out to me to say that they're, you know, they're progressing on footballing terms. You know, yeah, they'd be confident after that victory against Armagh, but for me, Monaghan are just on a different level at the moment. Yeah, I completely agree. I think five is, is pretty generous in the handicap terms. Uh, Damien, a few prices here. Um, yeah, one to four Monaghan, tens to draw, and four to one down. Five point handicap, as you were saying, Monaghan minus five, eleven to ten, ten to oh, one against. handicap draw, mm. and down plus five, five to six. So myself and Kieran are pretty keen on on down my our West uh, Monaghan minus five at eleven to ten. Would you make it a hat trick? No, I I think down are being underrated a bit here. Like I think they're. They're an average enough division to whose side, if you look at the results this year, started very poorly against Fermanagh and Clare, but they seem to have got things together and they had a very poor year last year. But I think they've improved a bit and they they were impressive enough against Armagh for me because everyone seemed to want to back Armagh and Armagh have probably a better forward line on paper than Monaghan do. But they, they shut them down in the second half very impressively. And I'm not sure they're, they're brilliant down, but they're strong around midfield. And I, I think beating them by six points would be good performance for Monaghan. Hmm, OK, so we've, uh, we've Damien on the downside of the handicap. So down plus five for you, Damien. Yeah. And and again, like the Dublin West Me game, lads, I'm just going to get a, a man of the match and a, and a first goal. Well, I, I stay out of this one, David, because it's on live and I'm covering it. So. Oh, oh. <laughs> right. We leave you out of this. We don't want to get you to lose your job there, uh, Damien. At a bigger price, first goal scorer Quaylon Mooney. Um, he's probably one of the fastest players around. Great runner with the ball, and you could just see him breaking through and get, getting the goal at twenty to one. I think it's worth a bet. Um, man of the match. Are you listening, Kieran? Yeah, I'm, I'm not. 
three to one, Conor McManus. Like he's 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 he's, he's, he's everything to Monaghan. And like if you look back at the matches they've played over the few years, he's probably got half the man the matches in Monaghan games. If you want someone at a bit of a bigger price, Colin Walsh at fourteen to one. He's been very impressive the first two games they've played this year, driving far from the back. And if it is a bit of a tighter game, I could see him having a big chance. Well, I think it's about time Jack McCarran showed us something like he showed in the league. And uh, I think this could be the perfect stage for him to, to shine. What price is Jack McCarran in the man of the match market, uh, Damien? He's 12 to 1. Nice, lovely. Yeah, hope you're listening loud and clear there, Kieran. Jack McCarran from Man of the Match at twelve to one. Now we spoke about the qualifiers. Well, Kieran did anyway. He got ahead of us. But just to pick out to summarise, Kieran, I know you're pretty sweet on on Cavan. Armagh for Mana. You seem to be on the Armagh side there. Yeah, I'm on the Armagh side because I just think for Mana are a team in decline. They've lost a lot of players. Um, I watched them against Monaghan and you know the threat that they had a couple of years ago Shawnee Quigley and Tomas Corrigan I just didn't feel it was there there was just something a bit of staleness about them um, Armagh for me are, are under a little bit more pressure I think I think I think, I think it's a must win game and we know that they do have a bit of quality in their team uh, unlucky not to get out of Division 3 weren't impressive particularly in the second half against Down but I just think that they've they have the players, the youth on their side, um, and it's more that it means more to them. I think it's more important for Armagh to come out with a win, so I fancy they'll, they'll, they'll take that on Sunday evening. Well, we're going head-to-head here, Kieran, because um, I'm not convinced by this Armagh team. I think oh, I'm not overly convinced by them by a long shot. I just think, it's a, I just think they'll win this one. Mm. Mm. I wonder. I just think that last gas goal from Michael Quinlevin that deprived them of promotion to Division 2 has an awful lot. That was a big game to win against Down, and I don't know, I just don't know if they've the bottle for us. And uh, for Mana, wh- while they were outclassed by Monaghan, like they, it, it was a very soft goal to concede from the kick-out, and they were well in it for 50 minutes of that match. I, I, I don't know, I, I think for Mana, are they 11-4, to 4, Damien? I think that could be a bit of value. Uh, they're into 5-2 to two now with us, um, 4-9 are 15-2 to to draw, 2 point ten in a cap. I would have, I would have expected that to be kind of an even money match. Being honest, which I'm surprised that that is a very good price for for Mana. Um, mm. but as I said, I just think yeah. Powell yeah. might squeeze it out, but not by much. Damien, have you any fancies in any of the qualifiers? Um, I think Limerick at home to Wexford. They just look like two teams that are going in opposite directions. Wexford got promotion early in the league, but they've kind of they've been poor very poor in the league final against Westmead and then well bet by Carlo whereas Limerick team looks strong enough they gave Clare a serious game in the in the Munster first round so Limerick had evens at home to Wexford I think is decent bet for, for this yeah, week I, I, I wouldn't disagree with you there the banty yeah, Kieran is his magic wand losing its powers uh, yeah I, I saw Wexford in the National League final against Westmead and I, I wasn't impressed by them at all um, they had nothing new uh, they were still reliant on kind of their older guard who have a lot of miles on the clock coming near the end the PJ Bambles the Kieran Lings and they're good good players who will, you know, should be performing at, at this level against Limerick but I, I wasn't impressed by them I wonder you know Banty's got them promoted um, I wonder will he hang around for another year I'm not so sure it's hard to know it's a, it's a, a big travel for him so uh, it, listen, I get the impression that he just only loved to be sitting beside you and that's on the game so <laughs> I think that's that's what Banty has his eye on that's, that, that, that's, that's where he's well, yeah he might be better off but uh, I just I think that's a 50-50 game like qualifiers and, and you know home advantage for Limerick might just swing it their way I'll tell you before we move on very quick story bizarrely I was on a Mead panel for an O'Byrne Cup Shield match one day Brendan Murphy was in goals for Mead and I was sub-goalkeeper and Banty was the manager with Paul Grimley and we were playing the, the bright lights of uh, Mead football we were playing Kilkenny in the okay. O'Byrne Cup Shield so this is roughly well I'm 31 now so this is maybe 7 years ago so we're playing uh, we were playing uh, Kilkenny anyway before the game it was a desperate night really really bad night me and Brendan Murphy were warming up 
Well, the warm up, I was bloody knackered on it. I was muck from head to toe going out onto the pitch. And sure, Brendan stripped off his training gear, put on his brand new clean gear. Me, I went out to play the game anyway, full of muck. But at half time, the score at half time, I think, was um, five points to Mead, maybe 1 1 to, to Kilkenny. Well, Banty came in, hit the table, and Paul Grimley, they had this big whiteboard out anyway. And uh, they said, right, lads, we're not coming back in here until we score 2 17. We're playing this an embarrassment. We're playing Kilkenny. We have to get to 217. My God, we're me. These are Kilkenny. The final score was nine points to 1-1. Nine points to 1-1. <laughs> that, that's your claim to fame. <laughs> that's my claim to fame, yeah. Being full of muck, sitting in the dugout for a burn Cup Shield match against, against Kilkenny. Uh, Brilliant. Kilkenny, yeah. yeah. Brendan Murphy taught, taught me all I knew. Uh, so all that's left after that uh, wee anecdote is for this weekend's best bets. And that the two-point handicap could be obliterated. That's not fair, Jack. That is so not fair. He's talking about the Mayo match there. This is the new, this will not be beaten. But anyway, I think that's a bit harsh. Considering three of my five naps have come up. Kieran, we'll start with you. Your best bet of the weekend? Yeah, I, I, I think Monaghan for me, I think Monaghan will pull away from down. I think. I think I just think there's a bigger gap in quality. I'd probably take the best bet of the weekend for me would be Monaghan minus five. Minus, Monaghan minus, minus five for Kieran Whelan. Damien Fisher from Paddy Power? Um... I know it's a football weekend, but I'm going to pick the one hurling match. I think Carlo to beat Leash at 7 4. Coming in after win the Christie Ring, they're on top of the world, obviously, and Leash, maybe not. I think Carlo will win that game. Okay, so Carlo to beat Leash um, for Damien in the sole hurling match of the weekend. And I'm going to go for Westmead to score over 11.5 points. I think they can get to about 14. Um, so Westmead to score over 11.5 points. That's it for this week's show. My, my sincere thanks to Kieran Whelan and Damien Fitzgerald from our sponsors, Paddy Power, for joining us. Don't forget to tune in next week. Paddy's gearing up for the GAA All-Ireland Football and Hurling. For all live TV championship games, it's money back as a free bet if your losing first goal scorer scores a goal anytime. Max £20. Excludes shops. T's and C's apply. 18 plus. BeGambleAware.org.